But I got a couple more songs, so let's do this. Cause I got two more songs, I think. So right, let's do this. Quick to make decisions, and I'm quick to get my blast on. Do a 187 with this motherfucking mask on. Is that Sebo? Rolling about the cut deeper than Atlantis. Toe is just a part left his heart on the canvas. Spice one. Spice one. Yes. Spice one. Yes. <laughs> a nigga got no heart. Yeah, trigger got no heart. How dope was that when that came out, no, though? I'm going to keep it real, my nigga. Spice One is the sound. Yo, I got to start. You know what? I'm glad you brought him up. I got to start bringing up Spice One more in my interviews. Yeah. I'm, I'm mad that I don't bring up Spice One enough. Why? Because I would be doing myself a disservice to not act like the foul shit that I was doing growing up. That that shit, yo, that shit played. Yo, I had to listen to Spice One whether I liked it or not. How about mm. that? <laughs> That's part of my culture, bro. Yeah. Like, yeah. like, Nigga, I didn't have a car. My partner did. I got to hear this shit every day. Nigga, this shit fire. I'm still scared of Spice One right now. What? And then how about this? The first concert before my first concert, I did with him and E-40. E Fonzarelli? With the click. My, um, matter of fact, a lot of my first concerts was with uh, E-40. Um, and he don't even know. He don't even remember me. I was too young. The first one, I was like, Shit, we was young. Damn. I was young, young. I was like ninth grade going, I was like going coming into the ninth grade. Yeah. So I mean I was 13. So mm -hmm. I was 13 on that show, and I was 13 on the show with uh with uh I was 13 or 14 with the with the show with uh, no, 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 sir. No, sir, no, sir, no, sir. I did a show with Cypress Hill. No, you gotta back up. No, you gotta back up. You just told me that you were 13 and you did a show with E40. You were 13, you did a show with Cypress Hill when you were 13. Yeah. What the fuck? Didn't that blow your mind? This is like yeah. well, well, not the not the first time. You know, like it's fucked up, man. And I gotta admit this. I gotta just come out. I guess I gotta be. I gotta bring it to light. I didn't like nothing when I was that age. So I thought, it, you know, if you wasn't say it, um, PA, you thought Cypress Hill was garbage, huh? You thought Cypress Hill was garbage. No, 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 not them. Oh. I, I was a Cypress fan. I, okay. I, I was all, I loved all that music, but I'm saying that just my attitude at that time, I didn't care. Hmm. You know, Ice Cube raised me, man. So, you know, um, uh, get off his dick and tell your bitch to come here. That was like, you know, I'm, 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 I'm you know, I'm raised by that. So I, I, even if you was dope and I did look up to you a little bit, I never got an autograph. I've never had an autograph in my life because of that song. You know what I'm saying? I've never gotten an autograph by no rapper ever. So you never got an autograph as from a child, even as a child. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Never. I, I you know, I was, I, I, you know, I seen a lot of our greats when nobody knew them. I seen a lot of them. I never would. I was an MC when I was not known. It was codes that I lived by that it was like, it was some assassin shit. You know, it's, it, trust me, it, it's political today. I'm, I'm very cordial, cordial. I'm saying as far as a nobody, nah, I don't give a fuck. Like, I give you your respect though. I wasn't cocky and arrogant like that, but in back of my mind, no, you can't. But I respect fuck. that mentality, PA. People get caught up to, to, to that's, that's a perfect mentality for a rapper to go into the game with. Because people get too caught up. And, I, and I'm, let me dovetail it into this. Every people, and I'm going to say this to some people, they might get offended. They drop it in my, in my DMs and they say, I got this big name on it. I got yeah. this big name. Bro, that guy can't make you hot. Like, yeah, don't even say that to a real nigga. Matter of fact, I, message to all the producers out there. Please stop saying who you did production for. That shit, don't, to a person that's actually doing something, you're actually pissing them off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We because only care about how good did the song sound. We know what it could be or, or what it might have been. Don't even do that shit. Just play us the fucking music. That's it. We don't want to hear that shit, yo. That's I don't want to hear that. I don't give a fuck who you fuck with. That all yo, I can do that all day long. I can you, imagine me. Imagine me playing agent. I'm not, I'm not on you, and I still don't feel like I'm known like that. Imagine me walking up to um, fucking Jay Z and going, 
Yeah, yeah, you fuck with me, man. I got songs with AZ, Raekwon, this and that, the third. He not gonna give a fuck. He's gonna go, what do you do? Right. <laughs> me and your shit. What do you do? Because it's like, it's I almost can like. Imagine myself, you know what I'm saying? You know, and I know, you know, I, I don't know Jay Z, but I know most, mostly every rapper. I can't imagine myself coming to Nas and like, yo, I know you heard the song I did with AZ, right? Yo, we need to. You know, I got a song with AZ, right? Like, Fuck out of here. Like, nah, if he didn't hear it on his own, I, right. I don't, I'm never going to, I'm never going to be like, listen to my shit. I don't feel like I'm dope if I do that. I feel like you're, 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 you're fucking it up to, to really know the truth. Yeah. If you do that, I, I got to know the truth about my music. Like, mm -hmm. if you, you like it or no, I'll go back to the drawing board. I have no problem with that. But one thing I'm not going to do is sell myself to somebody. Or not even coming to me and telling me that this is the guy that's on your cut. You, the artist, and you running around trying to pay for all of these features, thinking that that's going to blow you I up. I ain't going to say that because I get paid off of that, so I'm going to leave that alone. <laughs> listen, listen, you can pay, play Pan and Asia. Pay him all you no, want. But you know what? You're right about that. Sometimes it works, though. You know, you know. If you've got the talent this, to back it up. I say this. Pay, pay what you weigh because artists that put, if you put money on your shit and you dope, it, it, it shows that you actually give a fuck about your shit. You know, a lot of times I do, I've done features with hella different artists. The only artists that I continue to do features with after they've paid me is people that I know that just didn't pay me for clout. You paid me because you understood what this is. And mm -hmm. usually the song comes out. Yo, it's, yo I can honestly say the, 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 the features that I've done in the last... I would say 10 years or yeah, 10, 10 or six years have been way better than the earlier features I would do from just random people paying me out the blue that didn't really know how to rap. They was trying to get in the rap, but they had money. Now hip hop is such a culture, you know, it's overlapped to where you have people out there that, that's making dope beats, that got dope rhymes that's unknown. That that want to get on, so I don't want to discourage people from that because a lot yeah. of times I'm not gonna do the shit with you if you're not gonna pay because it's my job, you know what I'm saying? And then I don't know you like that, you know what I mean? But right. if you pay, that means you give a fuck about your craft because I pay, nigga. As long you know, I, I'm on Ghostface's last album. Um, I paid Ghostface like 14 grand from Interscope when I and that shit never even came out like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, niggas got paid off of Planet Asia. Like, a lot of these people, don't get it fucked up. Yes, I'm talented, but I met a lot of these big dogs is when I got signed because I wasn't scared to give up that budget. That wasn't my fucking money to begin with. What kind with. of grimy-ass story do you have from the industry? You were signed to who? And I don't have no grimy sto stories. I'm like a, I'm like a, I feel like a spoiled child. Only thing I need to probably do is say sorry to Jim. I, not say sorry. I probably need to apologize to uh, Jimmy Iovine for being young and dumb and just saying shit. Talk to me about what happened with Jimmy Iovine. I don't know if he ever heard. I, I, he might have heard. I think it got back to him when I was like, just, yo, fuck that nigga. Like, whatever, whatever. I don't give a fuck. You know, I, I really don't give a fuck. But I'm saying, like, it wasn't no, it wasn't really called for me to say He was full like of piss and vinegar, as they yeah, say. Yeah, I, I didn't really have to say. He didn't really, he ain't do nothing to me. You know what I'm saying? He was just he a president that, Got hired at Interscope after Tom Wally, you know what I'm saying? So it, it didn't have nothing to do with me. That's you was at Interscope. Who was also in the building at the time? Well, Jimmy well I got signed to Interscope directly by Tom Wally. See, I'm not like a lot of these other artists that I had came through third parties. I'm like, I got signed directly to Interscope and got everything I wanted. I was able to leave with everything I wanted. Uh, it was like being a fucking... I don't know, like a 4.0 grade average student that just never came out. So mm. I didn't. I don't really have no bad. Uh, okay. I don't have no bad industry stories, bro. I had Interscope to me is like the university I went to after high school. Mm, okay. I went. Okay. I went to two. It basically, you could say I went to three years of independent college, which would be Planet Asia making five thousand dollars a month to. Making you know, you know, a half a yard with Rasco, right, and up to damn near like a hundred thousand with Rasco, right. That's my junior college. I get signed in two thousand to Interscope. That's my university. Mm. I graduate in two thousand three. No, two thousand. Yeah, 
late 2003 and my my first album comes out 2004 through a indie label you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. which would be and the reason why i am i am today only difference between me and a lot of other artists like a quali and most def and all these other artists that came out during my time they was able to be pushed on a mainstream level i never came out uh with a with a real video on bet or real video on, you know what i'm saying like i never been like something pushed in your face every day. I've always been like a myth and something mm-hmm. that you kind of hear about. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, okay, but do you know about this? I'm the, do you, but do you know about this guy? Kaiser Sose. Like, like even, even the dudes today, they get a way more fair shot than I do. You know what I'm saying? They got a way, I'm like the sacrificial lamb for all this. But the difference is me being a sacrificial lamb, I'm not a wounded lamb. I, I was able to, you know, have a good time. You, do I look fucking ugly or stressed out to you? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, you look, I'm good. You know what I'm saying? So, I stalk. I, I stalk your social media. You always look like you. Yeah, I've seen. Shape. You know, I've seen this game do some shit to people and turn them into like bitter. I don't really have no bitter stories, man. Like, I did a lot of shit that I wanted to do. <laughs> I got one you know more song said? though. So look, uh, one more. This is one more song. Hopefully, when we get to the to the right part, we'll be able to do this thing together. I'm hoping. Okay. Okay, go ahead. Tell me if you know this song. And you got to wait till we get all the way to the part that we're going to do it together. All right. Discos don't open till after dark, and it ain't till 12 till the party really starts, and I always had to be home by 10. Right before the fun was about to begin, crowds of people lined up inside and out just one reason, to rock the house. That sounds like something from Houdini. But in the daytime, the streets was clear. You couldn't find a good freak anywhere because the freaks come out at night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. Freaks hey, come hey, look, out how, look how much of a rap, but look. Look how... See, I, want, I hope people really get this, what we're doing right now. Mm-hmm. You see how I was able to... Na- look, I, I didn't even know that that was the song. I'm buzzing, too. Mm-hmm. He was just kicking around, right? Mm-hmm. You see how I just said, that sounds like something Houdini? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because when you're programmed with cadences, I got cadences in me programmed already. Yeah. Dude, I used to spit. Okay. You, you, I used to spit. Old, this is how hip hop is finally grown up to have a history now. What did uh, KRS want to say? 50 years down the line, you can start this. And we'll be the old school artists. And even at that time, I'll say a rhyme, a brand new style, ruthless and wild, running around, spending money, having fun. Because even then, I'm still, I'm still number, number one. one. Oh, God, yeah. He said that. Look, look, he said, he said, many are taking rapping for a joke, a passing hope, or a phase with a rope. Sometimes I choke and try to believe how I get Challenged by a million MCs. Yeah. I tried to tell them we're all in this together. My album was raw because no one would ever think like I think and do what I do. I stole the show and then I leave without a crew. What would you think made up for KRS? Precisely teaching them. What do you say? He said, uh, aggravated travel, rebel, renegade, must they pay, not by financial aid, but a wave of hits causing me to take long trips. Yes. Come on, bro. I'm living that. I am a living product of what the fuck he was talking about. I'm listening to this shit as a kid yes. going, damn, he right. And yeah. I'm looking at him as an old dude back then. Like he's I older. thought he was old too. Yeah. He wasn't old back then. He wasn't even old, bro. He wasn't old. And when I first heard my Uzi weighs a ton, life changing. So you gotta think. So so look, Fresh Fest. The Fresh Fest that I was exposed. Your first concert. That was your first concert. That was my first concert. Yeah, the Fresh Fest. I, I got exposed to two different levels of that shit though, because my shit was back to back. So the first year, I want to say it was Houdini was in both of them. First of all, let's one DMC clear. Houdini, Fat Boy, Curtis both Blow, of them. both yep. of them. Yeah. Um, the first one had uh, it was Run DMC, Houdini. Fat Boys, Who Curtis mean, Blow. See, see, the Fat Boys and Curtis Blow wasn't on mine. Oh, they see, came to my city. See, my, see, the Fresno one was different, and it's crazy because even back then I knew that because I was like, damn, because I would read the newspaper and see what, you know, back, you know, the one in Oakland is the one you, see, mm-hmm. the East, Oakland and the Bay Area, they, and I think LA, they was able to have that Fresh Fest with the Fat Boys in them, and I wanted to see the Fat Boys back in the day, but they, didn't, they wasn't at ours. Ours had Houdini, 
LL Cool J, mm. Public Enemy, Eric B and Rakim, and Run DMC. Eric B and Rakim and fucking LL Cool J was not at my show. And, and Pete, this, this how this how new Eric B and Rakim was. The only fucking reason I knew it was Rakim is because of that Mr. Magic album, bro. Oh, I, it was that the good. whole time he hold on, especially eighty four, eighty four. You got to think. I didn't even know what Rakim looked like. The album wasn't out yet. I didn't even know what Rakim looked like or Eric B. I'm in the, I'm on the stands like he does, uh, I think either, uh, you know, I got soul or Eric, Eric B for president. He did Eric B for president. Ooh. And I'm like, that's Eric B. Put it like this. I'm not even saying Rakim. I didn't start, yo, keep, it's fucked up. And Rakim's one of my favorite rapper. Yeah. I didn't even start saying his name until his first solo album without Eric B. Before that, did you hear the new Eric B, homie? Yeah, yeah. No, yo, that new Eric B is out. Yo, Eric B yo. is on the cut, and my name is Rock so, 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 and you know, it's crazy. I didn't put that two and two together back mm -hmm. in the day. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, yo, that's Eric B. He had on a fisherman hat, jean, jean jacket, dookie ropes and shit. Da, da, da. I'm like, yo. Still, though, I was waiting on L. Mm. Mm. Public Enemy, the first rap group to ever scare me on stage, because they had the fucking Uzis on stage. I was at that concert. With the S1Ws. I didn't like Public Enemy's first album because it was ahead of my time. I didn't understand it. The first time I ever heard Public Enemy was live at mm. the show. I never even heard of them before. So the so first time was what? Yo Bum Rush the show? Nigga, the first time I ever heard Public Enemy was at a concert. At, they were performing in front of me. I didn't know that shit. You had, you had never seen them until you saw them live. I, I never heard you of never Public heard them. Enemy. Never heard of them before. That's I'm like, we're... We're about to get shot right now. <laughs> I'm like, this shit is weird. I'm young. All I'm in, ear, ear, ear. it's dudes on stage with guns. I'm, in the X. I'm nine years old. I don't know what the fuck's going on. It's my this? first time out the house. I'm like, yo, this is going to sound crazy. I'm thinking like, yo, my grandmother was right. I should have kept my ass at home. <laughs> yeah. I'm about to die. I'm about to die right here. In this. I'm thinking they're about to shoot at the audience with their Uzis and shit. I'm like, yo, these niggas got guns on stage, man. Like, the fuck, man? Well, how, when did the transition take place during that performance for you? What you mean? I mean, did you ever stop being scared during that performance and realize, yo, this is some crazy... Not really, because niggas... You got to think, man, this 80s. Think about the environment. Yeah. Niggas it's was getting their ass... Look, motherfuckers was getting their ass whooped every time the lights went off and when they came on. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting their ass beat. Matter of fact, somebody I said this on tomorrow shit. Somebody died at this show, bro. You know I mean, at your at your fresh fresh show. Yeah, somebody died at this shit. You know what I'm saying? And um, so but yeah, that's the year that LL came out of the radio, walked out out of the radio. Mm -hmm. That's the radio shit. Yeah, and, and I and he didn't do that in my show. I wasn't. He, he didn't come to my show. Oh yeah, yeah. We had the one. I had I I watched LL come out of the radio. The radio mm -hmm. come down mm -hmm. and he walk out the take part. Oh yeah, yeah. LL yeah, was the place must have fucking went bananas. So then he come back again for Christmas with Time Max Social Club. Rumors? Yes, rumors. Beastie Boys. Oh. And motherfucking Houdini, right? Oh. LL's the headliner of this one, though. Run DMC was the headliner of the last one. Yeah. LL's the headliner of this one, right? Yeah. Yeah. This time he's doing I'm bad shit. Now he's yeah. on the I'm bad shit. So, look, first time ever hearing Beastie Boys was at this show. Oh, yeah. Because you, so you're a little so bit Pete, younger than me, I think. So, Pete, yeah. we start booing these niggas. Because <laughs> they white. Come on, man. Yeah. You talking right. about 87? Mm -hmm. We booing y'all. You white rapping? Right. Like, I was like, get the fuck out of here. Yeah, I'm going to tell you, this is why I love Beastie Boys to this day. My favorite fucking group. By the mid of by 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 the time we got to the mid of their show, mm -hmm. nigga, the whole stadium was rocking with these motherfucking white boys, bro. They was whopping. Ah, the, the, music, the music was hard. I'm like, I'm buying that shit when it came out. And I remember when they came out and Paul Revere hit, and I still didn't even know it was them yet. I'm like, oh, that's the white boys. That, you know, rap is new. That's the white boys that was at the show. You know what I'm saying? Listen. Yo, this shit is. Fire! I own license to ill. You unfolded Yo, that it. Album. Oh my god. The whole airplane was you unfolded. 
and you got the whole plane, and do the hits on that rhyming and stealing, like oh my god, Paul Yo, Revere, to time to get yeah. ill. Yo, listen to it now, and you're gonna be like, this is the most ratcheted. Sh- this is the most ratchet shit ever. They talk about sniffing glue, smoking dust, taking pills. They talk about smoking PCP. They talk about all kind of foul sexual deviation shit. They just, they wilding on that album, Ooh, bro. Paul Revere is a whole gangster ass cut to me. At the oh, end. man. But just, but so, so you got to understand. So I'm giving you the ingredients of what makes Planet Asia. A lot of shit that I got exposed to, I got exposed to live. My first time, you know what made me buy DOC's album? Hmm. I seen him live. Wow. The formula. Nah. nah. That See, was I, the first. Gotta say, I'm into fast rap at this time. So, you know, Rock Him, Lyrics of Fury, and all this shit is my shit, right? Oh, okay. Yeah. NWA and them come to town. DOC, I just dropped, is getting funky. I like that track. Don't get me wrong. Mm-hmm. It wasn't all that for me. It was dope. I love the beat. Mm-hmm. I'm a, you know, I'm a, I'm an Asiatic rap nigga at this time. So mm-hmm. I'm not really. You got to rap with a certain aesthetic. Mm-hmm. But I love NWA. I'm an NWA fanatic, too. You know, I'm young, too, so I'm loving all this shit. Mm-hmm. They bring DLC. He does lend me an ear. Mm. Me and my cousin look at each other like, this nigga's good. This is God right here. Like, <laughs> yo, DLC, big part of my... Yo, I, yo if he would have never lost his voice, bro, I don't know what would have happened. But look, all I know was... Imagine Rakim and Big Daddy Kane in a khaki suit or 501s. That's all I can say. Mm. That's how I looked at DOC. Okay. DOC was like Rakim in 501s and a Raider cap to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just ill. Great, great fucking voice. Man, but I seen this shit live. It's a difference. You got to understand. I seen NWA live. And I've never seen them live. I seen Ice Cube with NWA and I seen Ice Cube without an NWA live. Mm. I seen Ice Cube on his first album live. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I seen Buster Rhymes live when he was 19 years old. I seen KMD live. I seen Redman on his first album live. I seen when Redman was the DJ for That's Effects live. This shit is live for me. So my hip hop experience wow. is not really like the average where it was like, I'm being introduced to tapes and videos and mm-hmm. shit. My shit was live. I was outside like that. So, you know, um, you know, like I said, even the second time I performed with E-40, I was only like 14 or 15 years old. Uh, at this time it was, um, it was X, it was me, it was, it was my group, E-40 and the Click, X-Clan and Gangstar. And we we bum rushed this show by the we got on this show by default because I guess the promoter wasn't paying niggas. Cause Kane was there too, but, but he didn't perform. And we like, fuck it, we didn't perform. But we bum rushed the show, threw our little dad in or tape or whatever the fuck we had. Body that shit. That's how I met DJ Premier. Yo, yo, you done met have did you meet LL before? I've never met L, but I got you know, I was on um Rock the Bells last year, he invited me I to a show, show and then I, was, I got interviewed by Roxanne Chante. That was just like, come on, man. Like I got invited to LL Cool J's radio to be interviewed by Roxanne Chante with DJ Cool V. L- listen, Roxanne Chante, that was- I got yeah. interviewed by Roxanne Chante, yeah. bro. Like, Yeah, listen, bro, I have to say this because I don't even know if this is on my thing or not. Um, Because people that have watched this show, they already know. Um, anchovies. <laughs> God damn it. Um, one of my favorite albums of all time, um, Apollo Brown. I played so many of those songs on my live. I either did reactions to them when I was doing reactions, played them on the live. One of them make me cry every time I hear it. I forget which song it is that I cry on camera every time I play that song. Um, what was the process? Like, did he reach out to you, uh, AB? Apollo Brown? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, he did. He he told me he always wanted to. Uh, he always wanted to make a project with me. And um, shit, I was like, oh shit, fuck, let's do it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I had already did some music with Mellow Music Group, so I think that might have made it easier. You know what I mean? Um, he was he 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 already. That's you know that's what he. He, he puts out his music at, and I never, I never knew that, you know, that's what he wanted to do. And it was just, 
it was a big deal, man. I, you know, and and it was bigger than what I thought it was gonna be. Like, you know, I didn't know that that album was gonna really do it, do it like that. That was, you know, I didn't know, man. You know what I'm saying? Um, that he was, album. You know, he's one of my favorites. Apollo Brown, definitely one of my favorites. He 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 understands the bottom line of what the frequency of this hip hop shit is about. You know what I'm saying? As far as the the sound of this shit. So, you know, I recorded that album in a week. You know what I'm saying? I did the whole album in one week. I, I, I flew to Detroit and I wrote all that shit and recorded it in that week. Oh, you a monster. I did two two to three songs a day. Yeah, we, we actually recorded more songs than, 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 than what you actually have. I, I have other songs that didn't make that album. We may have to talk. Um, <laughs> <laughs> listen, that thing, also, um, Tiger Bone, uh, mm -hmm. Fire, Avant Garde, I smoke, so I don't even have a good memory. I'm just pulling right. this up. Uh, panties in a bunch. Oh man, man, come on. The album, and I got a question in here somewhere, and I must have left it somewhere else in my computer. Mm -hmm. It was a review somebody did about the album, Slug Magazine or some shit. I mm -hmm. read it, and the dude said that he was bored with what you did on that album, and that you was all over the place, and he, you, you're trying to find yourself. Did you read that? Nah, I don't, I, you know, I, you know, a lot of this shit is subjective, man. And you gotta be, you have to live this shit to kind of like know what I'm talking about. It, you know, it's kind of like when you used to see, um, I used to see uh, shit in magazines about Ghostface where they'd be like, you know, they don't know what he's talking about, this, that, and the third. And I'm like, you gotta be into that shit to know what Ghost talking about. Like, yeah. I know, I know what the fuck he talking about. Why well, I know the what? Yeah, I know what he meant by the shit. But the dude yeah. said many of the beats didn't seem to match Asia's style. That's fuck what. Out of here, fuck out of here. If it like, didn't match my style, I wouldn't have did the shit. Like that's and, what. I'm... And you know, he might have been somebody who girl I humped back in the day. A lot of niggas is mad at me because I humped a girl back in the day. No disrespect. I'm just. What saying. else did he say? Wait, wait. I'm gonna tell you who the dude is because I just found a note. Um. This was 2017, uh, in August, a few days after my birthday, he wrote this. Right. Slug Magazine is the name of it. His name is Billy, ready for this? Schwarzfogger. The Fogger part is F-A-G-E-R. Schwarzfogger is his name. I, I, I didn't slack his girl, probably, but his girl probably talked about me too much, and that's why he had to write something bad. He, he got tired of his girl being googly about me. He said, P.A.'s okay. angst comes across as aimless and monotonous. Either that, either that or he knows some Neanderthal that I told themselves about. You know what I mean? See? <laughs> <laughs> Basically. I mean, you got some Neanderthals out there that be on me, you know what I'm saying? I don't give a flying fuck. You know, if you see Neanderthals out there, you know what I'm saying? Um, <laughs> Yo, this, <laughs> he, he said the Yakubi. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I, you know... When you said his last name, I'm like, yeah, I probably told him about himself. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't give a fuck about that. <laughs> like, just you know, some shit is like, but then it could be subjective too. It could just be how you feel. But bro, come on, listen. Shit. You're not. You're not. You. I. I, I want to talk to this guy face to face. I might email him because if you know, I don't believe that you really are um, in tune with hip hop at all. If you listen to anchovies and you say something like. PA's angst comes across as aimless and monotonous. You don't know fucking hip hop. Listen, me and my whole, anybody that's follow me, support me, we listen to, we might have listened to four or five albums one day on a live or something. And niggas was like, like, cause some church, so, it was a small segment that hadn't heard it. Like, what's this? And I was like, yo, let me hit you with this, um, with this, um, Tiger Ball. Let me hit fire. I was like, you know what? Fire. Let's do fire right now. We play fire. <laughs> I'm looking at my motherfucking uh, comment, my chest, nothing but flames going up. That's all. Listen, it's clear if you listen to it and that, that album, they might have to put Thriller Run DMC first album, Illmatic, and that uh, album in my casket. Wow. Uh, uh, I appreciate that, man. That, that album is cool. so PA, anchovies. Come on, bro. But you did a whole, you did a lot more after that. That was crazy. Like, trust the chain. I covered it on this channel. You know, it, it's, it, my growth and development is crazy, man. I, you know, it's two, it's two albums for me that, that, that kind of like pivot, I guess you could say pivotal moments in my career. And that would be what three, uh, Cali agents, um, 
pain language, mm -hmm. and anchovy sauce. Mm -hmm. And now kind of like trust the chain. So for me, when it came to hip hop, this was my outlet. So I wanted to be the best at this. I'm, you know, I could have easily been the worst of the worst. I come from that. But look at me. I could, I could be that. You know what I'm saying? I didn't want to be that. It's too easy. I, it's too easy. It is. You're right. It's too easy to be the stereotypical shit that I'm supposed to be where I'm from. I'm from the heart of West Fresno. It's niggas from where I'm from that that shoot them up, bang, bang, all that. But they had good parents and shit, my nigga. They had good parents. Yeah. They're, make, they're, they're overcompensating for some shit that they didn't come from. They don't know what it feel like to be hungry, hungry as, mm -hmm. a, as a baby boy. Like, I know. You know, my grandmother got custody. I remember when my grandmother got custody of me. You know, you're not even supposed to remember shit like that. I remember the first day of me living with my grandmother feeling like, damn, I finally, ah, finally can, you know what I'm saying? What happened that your grandmother got custody? My mom had a, my mom had a nervous breakdown when I was a baby. She, mm. She's a schizophrenic, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. No drugs or nothing, she just had a nervous breakdown. So my grandmother had to take me in, but it's always that dead, in between space before somebody get custody of you. I still remember that shit. You understand what I'm saying? And not only that, I just remember my grandmother having to work hard. Mm -hmm. I didn't grow up rich. I didn't grow up poor. I grew up rich with love, but I didn't grow up rich either. I didn't, I didn't, you know, I know that it was other people that live way better than me. It's just that you can't pay for class and shit. You can't pay for just, you know, etiquette and, and, and certain shit. My grandmother, instilled in me, you know what I'm saying? But I'm from the fucking hood. You know, my, my niggas, I grew up by the best, man. I was raised by the best, but I got niggas that never went to jail that was retired, you know, boys, yeah. you know what yeah. I'm saying? And yeah. never told on nobody, never had, cause they, ne they wasn't trying to be tough or none of that shit. Cause they moms was crackheads. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And they had to be the man of their family. You know what I'm saying? Like when you really come from the bottom, you really don't be trying to get in trouble like that, bro. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna keep it real. It's a lot of suckers. It's a lot of suckers out here, man. Because when you really hungry, you ain't trying to fuck that up, man. You you ain't you trying to stay as far as away from trouble as possible and only get money. When you fucked up, fucked up in life, you don't want no attention, bro. You don't want no attention. You don't you don't even want people to know how you live it. I remember lying about my mom. I remember I used to lie about who my mom was. Really? Like, why everybody bragging about, you know, this, that, my parents do this. I used to lie, my nigga. And niggas don't even know that. And then them same niggas that had good parents, them niggas ended up being shooters and everything you're not supposed to be mm -hmm. with having parents. Uh, was there ever a moment that you thought you were going over Cat's head, lyrically? Oh, I, I planned on going over your head at, from the game. Did you pull back to, to, to make it more consumable? I learned how to I learned how to rhyme better as I was making records. You know what I'm saying? I don't I'm not really a fan of my earlier shit. You know what I'm saying? Um I'm more of a fan of me after pain language. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, even with the Cali Agent shit, I love it. I love what it did. It, it was a time. So it was Cali Agents was more of an energy for me. And it was that whole album is about our principles of how we look at the game. That, that as far as the, how the West won, it was like yep. I'm not back. I'm not too backpack, and I'm not too commercial. That's our whole thing. Like, like no, I don't agree with everything you backpack niggas say, and no, I don't agree with everything you mainstream niggas say. And I think it's it may like, be one or two threats of somebody getting smacked on there. I might. It might. Yeah, be, it's yeah. a fine line in between. Like. You underground niggas got to understand, we trying to get money. But you mainstream niggas got to understand, we not about to make none of that goofy ass music yep, that you like. Yep, yep. So that was the thing, because you had this other world of hip hop, this subsidiary culture that was just lyrical, biblical, spiritual, weird for nothing. And I would get bunched into that shit due to the fact that my name was Planet Asia. So mm -hmm. I guess people would assume that um, I was going to be on some like, bohemian ass shit and I was I, I'm like nah I had a little bit of that in me because I'm a native tongue baby too but I'm more of a rock him baby yeah so yeah. I had to make a decision mid career I made I made a decision with myself mid career what type of um how did I want it to be how I want to be perceived did I want to be perceived do I want to be perceived as this bohemian Q-tip type dude, which I can go there. If, I can really go there if I want to. I, know. Or do I want to be known as the God. And so I have, people not getting me. I'm like, 
I got to really put myself out there because it's like, it, it's, it, it can be... No, but see, my people is expecting me to ask this right now. They expect me to ask this right now because you didn't set it up perfectly. Last week, a couple weeks ago, they was talking about this. The album with Mussolini, mm -hmm. Feral Chain, mm -hmm. the Jack Frost was a single I started playing. Mm -hmm. Jack Frost, first of all, they love it. Like people <laughs> love it. And they said, and, and they were saying to me in the chat, yo, PA on that pimp shit heavy. Like this whole album, he a whole nother like talk to me about that. I used I, I've done that, you know what I'm saying? And um I'm not a proud of that, but it's but I'm not ashamed of it either because a lot of people have uh their own interpretation of what that lifestyle is. Um if that lifestyle is it's an agreement, it's a it's an agreement. It's an agreement. Real the real lifestyle of that is an agreement that two people have to get somewhere in life. You know what I'm saying? We come from poverty. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. ghetto, we come from the ghetto, man. You know, I never really wanted to go to school after high school. You know what I'm saying? And um, at that point in time, I knew that that sells. You know what I'm saying? That sex sells. This is right before people knew about me and doing kind of like my the earlier, like my first album, the grand opening. I came out my first real album came out in 2004. Mm -hmm. The day that I came out, my my um my in store that I had for my first album, I got chose up on by by Ho, right? I didn't chew, I didn't go out looking for that shit. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? I got chose. Mm -hmm. Like, I, she knew what it was. Like, I come, I came up here to choose you. <laughs> I'm like, damn, I'm fucked up because I'm like, bitch, I've been. My whole life, I've been I've been working for this day right here. This is my in store for my first real release to the world, the grand open. Yeah, you come in here with these little bitty ass that bitch was bad. Ready to? Like I got my my baby mom's here. My well, she was my baby mom's at the time, but she's my girl. Baby mom at the show. I got this bitch with me and everything because. I'm I'm still in that world. People don't know this. I never even told these stories, bro. Like that, you know, that's a part of my life. more than what these niggas even rap about. Like, you know, kind of like Malcolm X. I had, I come from that. My uncles was that. My friends were that. I come from that. I got I'm knowledge. By, honestly, I do. But reality and music sometimes is not the same as you know. A lot of people do. The shit that I hide from the people is the shit that people rap about. You know what I mean? But I'm here to tell you that that culture is not what people think that it that's is. That, that's the shit. These that, niggas in my city, that's real pimps. I gave them their first one. Wow. Do you? I thought niggas with perms, niggas talking that bullshit. That is Slim. Da, da, da. What's the dude name? Slim, the old dude. Oh, He's that's my brother's. That's my brother's father. That's my. My man Frank Sigum just had a baby. Shout out to Frank. That's his daddy. That's my partner's pops. Phil Mo Slim is my boy's was, yes. father. That's his twin son. Bro, what was the movie I saw him in? Um, American Pimp. Seven holes down. It was. I, I saw both of them. What? Which? Uh, which, which uh, 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 hookers on the point. It was America. It was American Pimp and Pimp Some Holes Down. Yeah, exactly. Both of them movies. Yeah. yeah. So I understand, like it is, a, it's an arrangement, it's an agreement. Yeah, and you know that, you know, I'm a, I'm from Northern Cali, man. People gotta understand that, you know, and that, you know, you go back to the Mac, you know, blackness, pro, uh, pro being pro black, and that went hand in hand. You know, I don't really like to promote that shit because I don't really want women thinking that they need that's all they have. Right. But yes, it's power in that shit, and the, you know, them motherfuckers been doing it. Yo, it, it's it ain't shit when Hugh Hefner is doing the shit. But it's something when I do it. But that's a whole nother conversation. Right. You know what I'm saying? But you know, that's where the racism comes at, where it's cool for a white man to do that shit. But listen, they didn't really make the shit and, for and real he illegal. Wasn't the rules. That nigga was even, he wasn't even following the rules. He was doing shit that I'm against. Like I, I like I wasn't dealing with no young ass women. You know what right, I'm saying? Right, I'm dealing right. with women older than me or my or my age. Like, get right. the fuck out of here. Listen, it, it, it's like <sighs> They didn't even want to make it, they didn't have no desire to really make the whole thing illegal until brothers started getting money on it, exactly. You know, but yeah, so yeah, um, my whole thing is the type of artist I am, 
I didn't want to I didn't want to glorify where I came from, but I didn't want to hide it. So I came, you know, I got back into my Nas shit. I was like, yo, you know, I'm a tragedy. I'm more of like a, I'm like, I looked up the tragedy Gaddafi, right? Yeah. Uh, Intelligent Hullum mm -hmm. when he came out, when he, he was only like 16. Mm -hmm. So when tragedy came out, I was 13, right? Yeah. I was studying Islam. You know what I'm saying? Like Malcolm, I just, just, just read Autobiography of Malcolm X. I'm Malcolm X'd out. You know, this is where the whole Asiatic thing come from. And, um, about time Nas came out, you got to think, once again, I'm from the West Coast. Yeah. When not, I don't look at Nas like everybody else look at Nas. Hmm. Um, he, I look at Nas as one of the greatest rap, greatest rappers of all time. Let, hmm. Let's be clear about that. But I, but still, the way I look at him is not the same way everybody else looks at him. Because mm -hmm. I understand timelines and I understand trees of where he's put, I know where he's pulling his energy from mm -hmm. as far as, you know, the rappers that he looked up to, whether it's L, Rakim, certain, you know, Karis One, Cool G Rap, certain things. It's mm -hmm. certain aesthetic that come with that. And that's the same way I am. And Q-Tip, let's, you know, we all love Tribe Called Quest. Of course, Q-Tip, yes. I grew up with hieroglyphics, though, too. So that's where my, my vibey, because I was a big Native Tongue fan, but I love lyrics. And when Hyrule came out, it was kind of like the perfect marriage between being a little bohemian-ish, but still having like super bars. Mm -hmm. So when they came out, it was like the, the ultimate thing for like 93 and 94. Like 93 and 94, I was fucked up off a of high road because I'm like, oh shit, I had already been rhyming on some God. So I was already the God at that time. We selling final calls and all that. We in the nation at that time. Mm, okay. The, uh, two years before that. But when, when I'm still a young enough, so you know, I'm drinking and smoking and that. Yeah. I'm just finding myself. Round 93, I, I, I got knowledge of self. And um, High Rose had came out too. So it was a perfect blend of fly nigga, bohemian. Cause like they was wearing polo, nautic and shit, but they still had dreads and shit. Yep. So it was like, I was able to be like half native tongue and still half like polo nautica baby, right? Yeah. So like that 93, 94 era, I'm dreaded polo down, sometimes camouflage, but I still got dread. See, the lock part kept my bohemian side of things. So about time I dropped my first EP, I was still a little bohemian with the esoteric wordplay and shit like that. So when you hear me going like, through the mist to stay true to this, no matter what the opportunity is consumed, it confuse me not with foolishness. I stand on earth as the agent, beneficent, merciful, all that shit. Mm -hmm. That's my first EP, you know what I'm saying? Christ. And that was me being on some Shakespearean shit. Yeah. Now, I was still vibey a little bit. I still had a little, you know, um, 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 Bohemian in me. Mm -hmm. Red Meth Drop, the Blackout album, right? I'm already hype man for Rasco, and people know me for that song, Take It Back Home. We shot a video on everything. That shit's big. Boom. I see what Red Meth and them doing. I'm like, yo, we need to do an album like that. Boom. The Cali Agnes shit gets me back into my regular like EPMD before the Bohemian, back to my, you know, we mm. rappers. We, 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 we gonna wear chains and be clean and da da da. Boom. Yeah. I tell you, I used to wear troop jackets and snakeskin belts and shoes and, and silk. I used to wear silk shirts and gold chains. In junior high school, this is in junior high school, not high school, seventh and eighth grade. I was wearing troop jackets, silk shirts, snakeskin belts, snakeskin shoes. Sometimes I would come to school with a fucking suit on, like a real, like 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 the the other suits, like the Big Daddy Kane looking suits and hey. shit. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm one of them niggas. Like you know what I mean? I had homies that only wore dickies though. Yeah, I got homies like my my, my best friend Bo at the time. One of the people that every time I talk to them, be like, yo, tell them the real shit, bro. My, I got my best friend, Bo. That's why I said it in my rhyme. I talk about Bo a lot in my rhymes because Bo, he always be like, yo, man, why don't you tell them about the gangster shit you really do, man? And I'd be like, you know, that wasn't really cool when I, when, when hip hop first started. It wasn't really cool to talk about shit like that. Like, what's, what, what's normal today wasn't cool for me when I was coming up. So that it was a code that I lived by. You know what I'm saying? And now 
I had to graduate and understand. I'm, I'm still not telling on myself, but it's right. still certain shit I can let you know. Like, yeah, I went through that too. And this is what you're not supposed to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you got a song shit. called Thousand Dollar Shirt, something, right? What's the name of that song? Thousand Dollar Shirt? Thousand Dollar Shirt Me. Dirt Don Dollar Shirt Me. You play that on live. Per- perfect example of some shit that Tom would say, me. How I put the me at the end. I love that. Thousand Dollar Shirt Me, baby. You got yeah, Thousand Dollar Shirt Me. Yeah. That's some shit Tom would say. So, the innuendos of my dead homies live through my rhymes, man. They, you, but only people that grew up with me really understand that. And the people outside of me, they can catch the style of it. But what really makes me tick is hard for the, it'll be hard for the rest of the planet to understand because it's, it's layers to who I am. And Did you I, ever want to relocate to the East Coast? Was that ever an option for you? Or you just- I've lived in New York. I've lived, I mean, I don't really, my brain is broad. I don't really consider myself living nowhere. I don't live nowhere. I live on the planet Earth. Mm. So yeah, I've seen you in your car driving I around was in New York more last year than I was here. The last two that. years, I've been in New York the last two years more than I've been in, in Cali. I know. Again, again, I stalk your social media, so I'll be yeah. seeing you everywhere you everywhere you go. Yesterday, when you went to go, but get you know, it was one point in my time where I was in Toronto a lot. I love Toronto. It was one point in time. I was in, if, if if we had the internet back then, you would have been able to see me with Slum Village all the time in Detroit. Yeah, yes, I, I spent a lot of time. With nomad Christmas, like that. I spent Christmases and New Year, and New Year's is in Detroit. City. Yeah, back to, you ever go back to you've been rapping a long time. Twenty three like, years. I've been professionally twenty three years in the game. 23 years in the game as a pro. Have Do you ever go back to YouTube and check out your old numbers? Because I do. Numbers are stupid. Do you do that? I do. I do. All the old ones, like having things and shit like that. Just to see if people still tapping in and what yeah. the newest comment is and stuff like that. How does that make you feel that your, your, your music is, is enduring? And look, somebody that didn't know you when you didn't know nothing about you up until yesterday, all of a sudden find your stuff. They 19 years old. And they like, right. yo, how does that make you feel? That's crazy. You know, I, I, I don't know what to say. It's, um, I didn't know. I wasn't. Oh, I wasn't being aware that it was gonna be like this in the future. Like, yeah, you're gonna be able to. You know, it, you'll be. Every, we'll all have computers, and we'll be able to pull up any music we want to, pull up any video we want to, and that. You know, just for me to even be talked about still in two. It's 2021, bro. Like, damn, like. I'm I'm somebody in 2021 as a somebody rap, for real as a yeah, rap dude. dude, and it's like damn you couldn't have told me in '94 yo in 2021 man you are gonna be like a household name to like this type of rap and and you know what I mean because honestly man like even just in two, like 2005 you used to go like 2005 2004 it was hard bro. It was, was it? hard, man. It was hard, bro. Why? Oh my gosh, man. Put it like this. I remember when I used to talk to Rock Marciano every day on the telephone, right? Mm-hmm. And and it was like it was a a drop of a resurgence. And the, you know who, who you know who was the niggas giving us hope? I, I, I you know as far at, at this particular time for me Ooh. and him, I would I would have to say it was Prodigy still working with um. Alchemist, when he did like the Return of the Mac and all that shit, he was he was still standing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Bumpy Johnson mixtape, all that shit. It wasn't really nobody making, still making music like that. Like I remember, and Styles P had the mixtape music. Styles P had the mixtapes. Yeah, and, and then Raekwon was making all these mixtapes. I this time, this, Rock, this me and Rock is brothers, man. Whether regardless of what anybody know, we brothers. Mm-hmm. This is why I, this me and him from the same club because we was the only ones listening to like um, 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 Blood on Chef Apron and certain mixtape, certain mixtapes that Ray would make. I would call right like, yo, you hear this? And it would be like, it was like weird because you would have to be a certain type of person to even just know about, to even like this type of shit yeah. at this particular time. Yeah. And this was the shit we was listening to. Because the remember, wave was taking uh, everybody everywhere else. And yeah. they snapping down south and... Yeah, right. And so we was the only ones listening. I remember when uh, P dropped the thing and I called Rock and I was like, this is how ill it was. 
I was like, did you hear it? I didn't even say Prodigy name. He's like, nigga, this is my shit. Right? I'm like, Prodigy, right? He's like, hell yeah. I'm like, I, forgot, I think it was either Return, I forgot which one, but it was the one where he had the best, it, it was, he was in his bag on his samples. And it was like, you know, him and I was, it was, it was like right before, I don't know if it was before he went to jail or right. Yeah, it was before, right before he went to jail. And that was like the only shit for us. Like I would wait for any Raekwon mixtape it was like we had YouTube. YouTube was out at the, I think, at this point. You know what I'm saying? But YouTube came out in 05. Yeah. So we was able to get certain shit, but we were still getting like mixtapes too. And I remember we was me and Rock would just be talking about like these certain Rayquan mixtapes. Like is Ray was holding us down with the mixtapes. G. This right before Cuban Link Two dropped. Yeah. He was dropping a bunch of mixtapes, bro. And niggas like me, it I can't front, man. It revived me. It, it it made me care still. Like, you know what I'm saying? And then when Rock told me what he was gonna do, I remember he bought his MP and all that. And when he and when he made um the uh the first the first album that he dropped, uh Mossberg album, mm -hmm. I was like, yes, it it, it cause I needed somebody like that in New York to pop. I needed a New York artist to pop. So it the contrast would make it make sense. Cause if Rock didn't drop. If rock wasn't successful, it would almost it would make me look backpack almost. If West Side Gun and Rock Marciano didn't exist, niggas wouldn't understand what I do. I needed mm -hmm. niggas from somewhere else to do what I do because everybody looks over here for, for, for a different type of aesthetic of rhyme. I needed them to exist for Planet Asia to make sense. That's brilliant. How I you, didn't how make you... sense, bro. I'm gonna keep it real. My shit didn't make sense in 2005 and 2006. Mm -hmm. I'm thankful for West Side Gun and Rock Marciano existing and Action Bronson. Yo, act, yo, especially Action Bronson. Niggas can say what they want, be mm -hmm. mad all you want. Action Bronson is definitely one of the saviors, for real. Mm -hmm. He is. Mm -hmm. Because that type of rhyme, motherfuckers were scared to do that shit, bro. Motherfuckers were snapping, making 808 music, doing all this other shit. They wouldn't take a bare loop and say some fly shit over it. And that's all you really had to do. Yeah. So I and, and that's why I appreciate the whole resurgence, the whole movement. I'm glad to yeah. see that you that you got your rightful place in here in terms of I didn't have a, I didn't have a, I didn't have a genre to be a part of. Mm. Yeah. But I mean, like we love you now. Like this the, the I'm people, and I'm loving it. I'm like that's why I'm, I I can drop I can drop album after album now with super quality because I was built to make the type of music that y'all love effortlessly now it's not i don't really have to try hard to do that shit that's the thing with you so you talked about this before because you was you said to somebody it was either on twitter or somewhere else you had all of these features that you needed that you was busy like yeah. how many features are you on the hook for as we speak you know what i'm in like the 500 zone but i all together you know as far as publishing goes, I have over um, 1,200 published songs or some shit like that, 1,200. Mm -hmm. I'm you know, like, like 1,200 songs. Yeah, and so, and how many albums did you, I can't keep up, how many albums did you I only do? Did like, I only have like, uh, this year, tw I mean 2020, last year, you, you did Trust the Chain. Like three, 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 Joints. One of them was kind of like off the radar. Uh, it was uh, I did Trust the Chain. I did the mixtape with uh, Dirty Digs. Oh no, I did four. Damn, I'm tripping. I no, did. that's when it's Camo something, right? Nah, that 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 was a re-release from 2000. Re-release, okay. Yeah. So I did Trust the Chain, Arctic Degrees with Dirty Dirty Digs, the uh, Milano. I had the Milano EP. Milano joint. And I had the um, Arrow Chain. Arrow Chain joint. And then, then Bodhi Dharma. Damn, that I one, know. God damn it. That one just came out. Where it's it's on what? Exclusively on your band camp? Only on band camp. Yes. I, you know, I got so much music that that's about to drop. I have to separate how I sell that shit. I would like because I know everybody's gonna go to Apple iTunes. So my little esoteric, weird, just for me albums, I'm I'm keeping to myself. Bro, I listened to that album. 
The pronounce pronounce the title because I can't. Every it's time I Bo Bodhi Dharma. Bodhi Dharma is one of the Buddhas that came to China to teach China uh, the Dharma of Shaolin Kung Fu and the uh, of, uh, vegetables and how to eat to live. He's kind of like the Doctor Sebi. He's like the Doctor Sebi of that time back in the day. What happened was, you know. Western culture is all, white people have been teaching racism for a long time. So, so racism is always a key factor and shit. Back in the day, they thought that Bodhidharma was a curse to the land because he was dark skinned or dark. And it was a plague going around in China. You know what I'm saying? So he left, he went into the mountains and he um, meditated in the mountains for so long that legend has it that his shadow got stained on the wall. You know what I'm saying? And during that, during the plague, somebody had brought one of the sick patients to him, and he ended up curing them with um, natural herbs and shit, like some Dr. Sebi shit. And word got around, and so everybody started coming to Bodhidharma to where he was at in the cave, and revered him as this big medicine man. So then, boom, he comes into the city. Then he teaches them how to defend themselves against invaders of the farm, because you know life was about the farm back then. Mm -hmm. So all those kung fu techniques and all that shit. All that shit came from Bodhidharma and Shaolin. The temple of Shaolin is based on Bodhidharma. The swat sticker that you see in Germany, yeah, that's all from Bodhidharma. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, whenever you see a Buddha, that's because there's two Buddhas. You got Siddhartha, mm -hmm. who was the prince of who was a prince of India, and you have Bodhidharma, who was the the man who traveled from India into China and taught Shaolin Kung Fu. Mm -hmm. And so whenever you see a Buddha that's laying on its side, that represents Bodhidharma. Gotcha. And Bodhidharma, in my, in my view, is a black man with an afro. Because if you look at any old ancient pictures of him, he had a dark skinned dude with an afro with the George Jefferson, uh, he kind, yeah. of, kind of thin right I let here. this hair grow, that's exactly like what I'm Shown up, basically Bodhidharma. He said show up. No, I'm serious. No, for real, that's what he look like? Up? Big ass that's George, blew out like this, but nothing yeah. here. Yeah. Okay. And he had big ass eyes. And if you if you look at any picture of Bodhidharma, he doesn't have no slanted eyes. He has big ass eyes, bro. Mm, got you. Know you. What I'm yeah. It's, it's the God. He was a black man, God. And that's the name of the last album you dropped. The last project, because I, that was an extension of the Golden Buddha. Because a lot half of the Bodhidharma album were songs that didn't make the Golden Buddha album. Oh. So those songs, those songs were actually. Um, a lot of those songs were uh, recorded in 2012. It's so good. It's so good. Um, you know, and let, let me tell you, I don't know how long I've been talking to you. I just got more questions. And I'm going to tell you right now, before we even get done with this interview, because mm -hmm. you don't even watch your interviews, I don't know. It, it might take me a week to, to edit this thing. Oh, good. For, for, for one hour, it will usually take, I do edits for 17 hours for a one hour interview. Right. So it's going. I think this is going to be like one interview that's going to be like forty five minutes, and then there's going to be a whole bunch of other stuff that didn't happen in the first interview that's going to get okay. just get dropped on them. That's what. Oh, oh, for the record, I'm over here drinking white Hennessy. White <laughs> Hennessy. I can tell white. you. I can tell you, nice. White Hennessy. You Hey, you so nice. You so nice. I want you to get a partner. I want to get a partner so we can play these spades. <laughs> Yo, I'm so I'm black. I need to learn how to play spades. That's you don't know, you like the third person that came on this show that don't know how to play spades. No, don't do, don't do it. But you know what? I'm a fast learner. I can learn. I learn shit. I'm like, a and viewer. you're smart. I'm gonna teach you, and then you'll be my partner. For sure. And I'm gonna scream on you if you don't. Uh, if you get a set, I'm just. <laughs> I, would, I would never raise my voice to Planet Asia wow. um, again. Planet Asia. I need to say this. It's a moment. It's a moment I've been waiting for for a very long time. It's an honor. You know I. I cannot believe it's like a dream come true, quite honestly. Right. Um, I have been telling my people uh, on my IG page, you know, sending you love letters, pause, like, yo, I'm trying to, <laughs> I want to talk to Planet Asia. It finally happened. Um, right. Your your skill level is beyond, clearly. Um, you wanted the best that, to ever do it. Right. Um, and this show would not be anything at all if i was talking about hip-hop and i didn't have a chance to have you on it wouldn't mean a goddamn thing so wow. thank you bro like I, my my OG heart. Partner, I know this is an authentic show so i'm like let me put my og partner on yeah. it i don't ever really do that i'm like fuck that i'm gonna call him yeah i was like yeah he gonna ask me this shit you know he how we do? boom and you got to get some real 
section yes. eight of this conversation, man. Bro, I got we love for you. Going to the projects of how we started. You know what I'm saying? We got, me and this nigga got a movie worth of shit to talk about. And I'm going to be out there to film it. You just got to give it to me. I want the exclusive. <laughs> I want the exclusive. I got to have it. Wow, you know, wow. But, but Planet Asia, man, you, you, you. No, nah, we ain't definitely, we're not doing that. You, you made, we made this plat. <laughs> what, what is we not doing? What I just. <laughs> Let's. <laughs> The mayor's in the building. What's popping? Hey, he said, no, we're not doing that. I'm touching down in Fresno. Somebody better watch my back. Because these Debo niggas, y'all got running around there. I don't want them niggas running up on me applying no more fucking pressure. Oh. <laughs> hey, so Planet Asia, thank you once again for coming through. And, um, bro, it's my honor. And we wow. certainly do appreciate it. Thank you for coming through. Man, no doubt, man. And thank you for the intro for the for the project and shit, G. Absolutely. Right. Oh no, I'm a, I'm a, um I'm emailing that to you ASAP. Sure. Oh, tomorrow. Yo, hey.